is Diane's uh, structure. Yeah. I like it. Trampoline frame structure. Smart. Repurposed trampoline frame. That is so clever. Here's her pickering. Like We're about a year and a half after planting now. You can see uh, the dwarf pruning, she's tying it so it's along the ground. And it made three fruit last year. And this is one of its uh, seedlings from last year. And you can see there's many um, fruiting twigs. So there'll be a lot of flowers this year, even though it's a very small plant. It's not bad. You can see there's hardly any leaf spots. It's a very mm -mm. leaf spot resistant variety. That's Here. the bunchosia, how do you say that? The peanut butter Peanut butter fruit. fruit. Look at it. So she just took the the frost cloth off. Yep. This, this part, this part was a pool frame. Oh. And this part's the trampoline, and she just kind of turned it 90 degrees. Uh huh. And then used, you know, the legs here, the legs that would have normally gone into here. Uh huh. Went into this part, which is where the other hoop would have gone. It's hard to want to take credit. I know she does such clever stuff. <laughs> I just said your mangoes. And now she's getting to actually have them. That is so cool. So don't be limited thinking you can't grow anything or people tell you you can't grow it. Just prove them, prove them wrong. The art of gardening or farming is providing the plants or the crop with the conditions it needs. People say to me often, um, well, that doesn't grow here. The pines and the oaks grow here. Everything else we cultivate, that means we provide the conditions that it needs. So it's not whether the mango grows here, it's whether you're going to grow the mango here. Are you going to provide the spraying, the fertilizing, the proper soil drainage, the proper rootstock, the training methods, and the frost protection? It's whether or not you're going to provide that. That determines whether the crop grows here. So this is the uh, seedling mango we, we grafted last year. We did two in arches, but one of the in arches didn't take, which is fine because two is one, you know, two grafts is enough. Here's where we in arched uh, one of those potted mangoes. And here's where this was connected to the pot. We cut it off. But that was still above the graft, so the, the mango can grow back. So it has this whole top on it, with lots of places where it's going to make flowers. See, so so this will actually fruit, you know, less than one year after it was grafted, because we grafted, we enarched, the enarched grafting te technique, this large top on it. And so here's just I don't know some random seedling mango, and then here. Uh, this particular branch was actually flushing nicely, so I went ahead and did a normal graft here. You can see that. But th this one, it was a little cool when we did it, and this was dormant, so we just did it in an arch. This is the one we did a video on. I believe, yes. That's a little Anoa lizard. So it, it'd be nice to come back and see it when it's got some fruit, too. That would be awesome. You can. So what do you call this style of, of uh, training? Well, we're, we're doing a dwarf, uh, dwarf style of training because we want to keep the plants low so we can protect them from frost. That's, of course, what the Christmas lights were for and the whole thing was covered. But So th this branch is going to be a permanent part of the tree. And then the, the fruiting wood will grow up from there. But once it gets about this high, we'll be selectively cutting individual shoots out uh -huh. um, when they get too tall but never all of them at once like maybe more than 20 25 percent of the fruiting wood gets cut each year to maintain the height but um the rest of the fruiting wood grows so would you so, take one of that fruiting I mean, one of the wood uh branches to pull back over here or you start on this one no we want we want this one to be two-dimensional okay um because of the space between the other fruit trees here 
So we're going to let this one be two dimensional. But yeah, if you were if you had the room, it could be as wide as you want it. Yeah, but this one's going to be linear, kind of like a grape. That would be. That's cool. Would you let some more grow in the middle, or you leave the middle open for right now? Do you know how the, I, the trunk tries to push out? I imagine, no, I'm not going to let the seed, the, the root stock grow, but I imagine a sprout from here and a sprout from here. Come we're, up in the middle. It's close enough that you'll you'll have fruiting wood all along, but yeah, only from the grass. So you would, if you wanted to graft more, you would just graft onto the variety that's really yeah. tasty and just add a limb to that one not you wouldn't start from here from a e each of these a um, sucker. fruiting shoots that come up mm -hmm. could be a different variety that's a good idea you know but i would probably have you know one here and maybe one over here because you know they grow up and they branch mm -hmm. i love this and then you you would prune to here and actually your fruiting shoots could come out this way Kind of horizontally and then come up and then they could come out in the middle and bush out would you need to always stake it up just in just to be careful with the the fruits so the fruits don't break the limb yeah if, if that's required you've probably seen some of the pictures or videos of how they do it in japan in the greenhouses where there's lots of strings and little hammocks for the fruits and so that's awesome. They even put foil down to reflect light to both sides of the fruit, so it's evenly that? colored. That's a, that's clever. Dr. Campbell has some videos on YouTube about how to do that. That's where I learned it from. And I just kind of watched how the tree grows. And so they say mangoes need nighttime temperatures consistently in the 70s to do a kind of a normal graft. And we only get a few months here in the summer, three, four months, where the nighttime temperatures are really consistently in the 70s. So um, half of the mango grafting season, I do in arches. I um, like that one. Because it's going to most definitely take in the cooler months. They, yeah, they just grow more slowly. Mm -hmm. But um, I would get scions in the summer. If you're going to do a normal graft, you'd want to do it kind of July, August, September. Because that by then, you won't have any flower buds trying to push out. Because if you take it too early, won't the graft mess up if it's trying to make flowers? The grafts won't take here early because it's, it's not warm enough. so cold and they're growing slowly and actually the, the graft union rots okay. before the cambium ever grows together. But if you catch them in, in the summer when they're actively growing and it's hot, mm -hmm. then it works just like it's good to know. Like wherever, like and, down south, yeah. And then you want a uh, new growth to have like what ninety percent chance. You know how you have the new growth pushing out from the rootstock? Yeah. That'd be the best time to try to graft it as well in the warmer temps at Absolutely, night. Absolutely, yeah. You want your rootstock to be actively growing. And that kind of goes with any type of rootstock, correct? Sometimes, it, like with apples and pears and peaches and plums, it hardly matters. Because they're dormant, it doesn't really... You don't even have to cut them that well. True. They just kind of put them somewhere near there. And then, right, and they'll they, take. But but uh, mangoes, it's a little, you know, you really want to line up the cambium. And persimmons, it's critical. You've got to have that vigorous first flush in spring for them. A few take. inches, right? I do, and I do persimmons the same way when I do persimmon grafts. Um, throughout the summer I do in arches because I can't get a persimmon to take. Right. Except for that first spring flush. We actually got a little um, over ambitious. And it broke it. With training these branches horizontally and it started to split here. So I did a, a figure eight with the string to hold the split back together. And then I wrapped the little split, it was just a little split, with rubber bands mm -hmm. and grafting tape. And so that will heal, and this will hold it. And the branch is already tied, you know, sufficiently horizontally. Right. So, That's so. good to know, because yeah. um, that, uh, that, the, uh, the parafilm helps it keep moist enough to heal back. It keeps the dirt out. The rubber bands the bind it together keeps it tight and this keeps it from splitting um, so this technique I use a lot when if you're trying to prune branches that are almost a little too old I mean not prune but train mm -hmm. if you're trying to train branches that are almost a little too old to bend right um, you can reinforce that narrow crotch and train the branch and it'll heal up and be strong Good to know. And it's less likely to girdle because it's a figure eight. Mm -hmm. And you just want to watch it. 
and you can go in here and tie this like let's say in the midsummer this is girdling a little bit or maybe late spring you can tie some more string around here and loosen this and retie it maybe a little higher up so it doesn't have to girdle it if and you then pay after, attention after probably a year or so you can undo that parafilm or it just kind of falls off after the spring and summer flushes um, there'll be new layers of wood grown over all and of it just yeah probably break it right through It'll a, it'll be it'll be strong and trained. I'll start learning about the pressure and build more wood in the area. I tied here just to reinforce this in arch. It's pretty well grown together, so it's probably not necessary. But when when it starts to grow enough to girdle this string a little bit, we'll take it off and I'll make a nice cut here. Okay. And it'll be fine. My little mango is doing good. It made it through my putting the little. Actually, the frost cloth coverings that were like, they're like a, they're designed to go over the whole plant. It made it. And I put lots up in there. But that's the one that I have in a pot halfway in the ground. And it's kind of grew through the ground. I think I'm just going to leave it there as an example. And then I think I'm going to cut the pot out from it and just leave it mounded. One of the reasons that that one might be doing well is because if it's in the ground, it's actually got roots down into the warmer soil. That's why. And and it, it's the top of the mango might take 30 degrees or 35 degrees or whatever, but the bottom needs to be about 65 probably. Right. Actually, for the roots to metabolize and keep it alive. I think some of the mango varieties, like the turpentine, do better in cold, wet soil. Mm -hmm. um, at least for us, it seems to, you know, in like the Tommy Atkins which is kind of fuzzy. It seems to do better in the cold, wet soil. 